Laurel Wilson, IBCLC et intervenante professionnelle, nous parlera lors du prochaine journée internationale de l'allaitement le mois d'avril 2016 des dernières recherches sur l'impact long terme de l'allaitement maternel suite aux études d'épigénétique. Elle nous dévoilera aussi les résultats des recherches dans l'impact de la consommation de marijuana sur les bébés allaités. Laurel Wilson, merci de nous rejoindre. Les informations que vous nous apportez sont des recherches d'avant-garde venant du monde entier. Nous ne sommes pas tous à jour sur les deux sujets dont vous nous parlerez lorsque vous vous joindrez à nous ici à Paris, à la GIA en avril. Pouvez-vous définir l'épigénétique? Yes, so epigenetics is actually the study of how our genome, our DNA, is influenced by our environment. So those environmental exposures, things like Um, the nutrition that we eat, the environments we live in, the toxins we're exposed to, those change how our genome is expressed. So epigenetics is simply the study of the expression based on our environment. Ok, merci. Donc, est-ce que cela signifie que nos gènes peuvent être modifiés ou seulement influencés par l'environnement? So essentially, the DNA is very rarely modified. There, it's kind of like your hard drive in your computer. It, it doesn't change much at all. What changes are the programs that you're running on your computer, and that's like the epigenome. So we're constantly eating different foods. We're constantly in, moving in different environments, taking different medications, exposed to different toxins, and those things change what parts of the genome are silenced or expressed. So... You know, we can see changes throughout our lifetime, but the most critical period of influence is really from zero to three, which is why how we feed ourselves during pregnancy and the first nutrition for a baby, hopefully breast milk, can be so influential for our long-term health. Nous savons depuis longtemps que l'allaitement est important pour construire la santé humaine, mais avec de nouvelles recherches dans ce domaine qu'est l'épigénétique, est-il vrai que le lait maternel peut avoir un tel impact sur la santé humaine qu'il exerce à travers les générations futures Pouvez-vous nous expliquer pourquoi Yes, not only can we see breast milk change epigenetically, either change the silencing or the expression of certain genes, it can actually create what we call epigenetic tags. And this is information that carries through in whether if, if it's a boy, it carries through in the sperm, if it's a girl, it carries through in the egg. Um, and so we can actually see some of that information carrying on to future generations. And in fact, in some um, studies, animal studies, we're seeing the epigenetic tags that can last up to 10 generations out. And in human studies, we've seen that we can see certain epigenetics tag, tags carry out for up to five generations. So how we feed our children, particularly during this critical period of development, can influence not only our babies' lives and their health, but our, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. So how we invest in nutrition today is so critical for really ultimately our evolution as a species. Pourquoi pensez-vous que l'utilisation de la marijuana pendant l'allaitement peut avoir un impact sur les bébés? Well, very recently, only within the past decade, we have discovered an entirely new system within the human body called the endocannabinoid system. And this system is really responsible for all of our organs' homeostasis, and it's really critical also to our immune function. And one of the things, um, well, two ingredients that are pretty critical in um, marijuana use are THC, and CBD, cannabidiol, and these are cannabinoids. And our endocannabinoid system can be, um, can be taken over essentially by the THC cannabinoids. And they can alter, they can actually cause epigenetic changes and epigenetic expression as well. So when we have non-endogenous endocannabinoids um, released within the body, such as through smoking or ingesting marijuana, that can change how um, a baby's neurogenesis occur. It can change how certain organ systems are developed. It can change how the brain is developing in the long term. And so whether a mom is smoking or ingesting um, on an occasional basis or whether it's chronic use, we can see different changes based on when that exposure is happening. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of human studies that tell us, you know, what, what specifically is going to happen in the human. We're looking at a lot of animal models right now, but those animal models are, are likely very similar to what's going on in the human. And we do have quite a few 
studies that have looked long term at chronic use during pregnancy and breastfeeding, and we have seen some potential motor skill um, impairment and long term brain impairment as well. It seem, we seem to see more challenges the longer you go out. So we may not see those. Um, we may not see necessarily the the damage in childhood or in the teen years, but as we start to get older, we're starting to see more and more effects of chronic use of marijuana during um, that, those early years, zero to three. J'aurais pensé que la majorité des mères enceintes et allaitantes accordent une attention toute particulière à leur alimentation. Y a-t-il donc frange particulière d'une population donnée à laquelle cette information concernant la consommation de marijuana s'applique? Well, surprisingly, it, it's, it's everyone. Um, Marijuana is actually seen as a really natural form to use for certain, you know, as a medication. So a lot of people are using it to treat migraines. Some people are using it to treat um, chronic pain. Um, other women are using it to relax. In fact, there are entire groups around the world. There's an international marijuana mothers club um, where moms are using it to help them with mothering because they feel it helps them relax a little bit. And so it's not necessarily who we used to think. It's not really the hippies that are, you know, or the hippies of yesterday who are the only ones who are using it. It's really people who are looking at having a really natural lifestyle. And um, when you actually, it, when I started to do research about France, in fact, France has, um, depending on the study that you look at, they actually have higher statistical rates of marijuana use than even we do in um, the U.S. population. <laughs> and you would also, which is Quite, quite interesting. And the other piece that is also very interesting is you would think that um, women would stop using marijuana when they're breastfeeding, and in fact, they don't. In fact, the, the numbers are almost, they're static. If they've been using it pre-conception, um, they're still using it in pregnancy, and they're still using it in, in breastfeeding. So they don't really see a need to stop that. And in fact, marijuana is the, it's the number one drug used during pregnancy and breastfeeding today. So yeah, we, we do have to talk about it because it is, it's a really commonly used herb. Okay. Eh bien, je vous remercie beaucoup pour cette discussion. Absolutely. Nous sommes très impatients de vous voir à Paris en avril. I'm so excited to come and speak to, and speak to everyone. I, I think these two subjects are um, becoming more and more important for families to really, really be aware of and understand. So I'm excited to share the information. Thank you. Thank you.